Former attorney for pre former President Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani, has been accused of sexual assault and harassment by a former employee in a $10 million lawsuit. Now, this lawsuit also includes allegations of wage theft and other misconduct, according to a complaint which was filed on Monday. Noelle Dunphy, the former employee who was hired by Giuliani in 2019, said that Giuliani was selling pardons for $2 million and that he and Trump would split the amount. According to the complaint, Giuliani told Dunphy she could refer individuals seeking pardons to him, quote, so long as they did not go through the normal channels of the Office of Pardon Attorney, because that would be subject to disclosure under FOIA. The 70-page complaint includes multiple instances of sexual harassment and assault on the part of Giuliani, including allegations, um, accusations that he asked Dumpy to perform oral sex on him in his apartment. The lawsuit also includes screenshots of conversations between Giuliani and Dumpy, including this one, where Giuliani said, good morning, my love, to Dumpy, and asked her if he could shower with her. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, so say we should revolted. say that. <laughs> Yeah, the Giuliani did not uh, respond to Politico's request for, for comment. He has uh, generally reported, uh, his advisor has uh, reported uh, that he told the Associated Press that the former mayor vehemently denied the allegations and added that Mayor Giuliani's lifetime of public service speaks for itself and he will pursue all available remedies and counterclaims. Right, but we can see those texts, so that's... There's also, damning, in fact. yeah, I mean, there are a number of allegations, including um, that he persistently called her repeatedly, you know, the mm -hmm. kind of allegation that I would presume you have a call log to back up. It seems clear that he, they, they did work together. There are photo, there, there's at least one photograph of them together that's been reported out in this um, uh, Daily Beast uh, article. The nature of this uh, of these allegations are all over the place. She alleges that he uh, was drinking constantly and many of his remarks were made uh, in kind of an alcohol-fueled um, moment that he was a, quote, you know, functioning alcoholic, that he started asking for bottles of alcohol around 10 a.m. There are a number of anti-Semitic comments, including saying that Jewish men have smaller genitals and that it's, quote, time to get over Passover because it was like 3,000 years ago and that black men and Hispanic men hit women because it's in their culture. I mean, it's a very damning... Hot take factory. 70-page <laughs> complaint. Yeah, look, I, I think... Um... It shows the, look, Rudy Giuliani was, was not a character, it was not wise of Donald Trump to rely on Rudy Giuliani for advice at several critical points in his presidency. I think this further demonstrates, and look, he's a, you know, if he should deserve due process and all of that. Sure. This is not a criminal matter. This is an employee who says he mistreated her and she's, you know, presented some evidence to that, to that effect, maybe... Some of it is true and parts of it are not. Maybe all of it's true. Who knows? But it speaks to Giuliani's judgment, and his judgment was very much a factor in how Trump handled the 2020 election. Also, what got him in trouble in the first impeachment was, from my reading of it, my I came away thinking it was substantially Giuliani's fault, that Giuliani largely introduced the idea to Trump that he should hold out we, it was a complicated matter, but the, the Ukrainian issue and, and he, you know, a quid pro quo, wanting them to do something, to announce an investigation to the Bidens before they would get something from. It was, it was Giuliani who explicitly told Trump to frame it in that way, mm -hmm. and thus it, it, that, that's why I was a little, I, I was not as sold on the first I impeachment the way it was pretty ironclad the second time around. Mm -hmm. The first time there was some wrongdoing, but it wasn't as clear to me that Trump. Really, maybe this isn't a great defense of Trump, but that he really understood the the not great aspect of this. It was relying on Giuliani that really got him in trouble there. And then that was, again, the story of 2020. Um, Giuliani making outrageous claims on TV with his head partly melting that he could <laughs> not back that. up, that eventually got him, even, it was embarrassing even to, even conservative media had to go and try to defend it, and they couldn't because it was impossible to do so. Um, Trump really did himself wrong by, in several ways, by relying on key people who were, who were bad. And Giuliani is, to my mind, forefront. Um, look, I know he had a sterling reputation from the 9-11 days, and if he'd just, like, mm -hmm. ridden off in the sunset after that, he would have been, like, you know, rightly or wrongly yeah, gone down he might, in the he history books. Yeah, he might be on a, a, a $20 bill someday. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he has, uh, he, I think his reputation has soured, and it, that's yeah. his own doing. Yeah, so I take your point that there is no, um, well, 
there's no criminal wrongdoing. There is the there are these wage theft claims. Apparently, Rudy Giuliani told um, Noel Dumphy that he would pay her a million dollars a year. I think the complaint said that she got paid um, like twelve thousand dollars total. So there's a, there's a big uh, wage theft claim in, in, in addition. Well, to he doesn't all have sexual... any money because Trump didn't pay him for it. Right? <laughs> Wasn't that a thing? <laughs> Uh, th uh, Trump refusing to pay. I, I, I remember the, when this was an issue. Yeah, Trump refusing to pay Rudy Giuliani's legal fees after falling out. Uh, Trump has told staff not to pay Rudy Giuliani over irritation at being impeached again. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that that makes that kind of assures up her claim somewhat about yeah. just not getting paid for her services. But additionally, there is this allegation out here that he was selling pardons for two million dollars, which then he and Donald Trump would split the money. Now, obviously, that's just an allegation. It doesn't seem to have been corroborated as of yet. Um, if it is, um, it, it does feel like that would be a much more substantive thing for people who are trying to prosecute Trump and Sure, but it also to just to sounds after. to me like a boastful thing Giuliani would say. Um, what does that mean? What does that mean if your personal lawyer is telling people who are not protected by attorney-client privilege that kind of a thing? Why would you even boast about the president of the United States being involved in a criminal conspiracy? It tells me, like to conspiracy? quote Arrested Development, I have the worst effing attorney. <laughs> 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 Trump found himself in a George Blue Ooh, situation. I mean, look, when you look at this stuff, apparently he made her do work in like short shorts with the American flag on the back that he he purchased for her. That he said that he liked when for her to perform oral sex on him while was he was the on the of phone because. <laughs> Because it made him feel like he was Bill Clinton. I mean, are any of these allegations in the world that we live in enough to change anybody's perception of Rudy, Rudy Giuliani or Donald Trump? Or is everything so deep in the muck already that this kind of thing just... Yeah, this is some, like, ephemera. 80s businessman energy. <laughs> Wolf, Wolf of know. Wall Street. Yeah, that kind of I mean, but stuff. It's, it's sad. And, and part of what's so sad about it is Giuliani making these kind of unprofessional disclosures on top of the sexual harassment, yeah. on top of the wage theft, on top of the, you know, the alleged, obviously in no way proven, um, selling of, of, of presidential pardons. I mean, I, there is this, this thing that liberals used to say a lot with Donald Trump back in the early days that there, it's like gish galloping. He just does so much and there's so much wrong that you can't get anything to stick to him. And it does start to feel, especially when you go into the universe of Trump affiliated characters who are somehow mm -hmm. even more messed up. Well, right. And again, <laughs> I, I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but Trump did not pick the best people. And, and even if you want to say sitting their best. <laughs> the personal, uh, like the color, the clown characters like yeah. Giuliani, you know, he Trump said he wanted a different foreign policy. He wanted to break with the neocon establishment. He wanted to do different things. And then he picks John Bolton, a very much of that, uh, not, actually not even a neocon, more of a just like, like reduce their country to ashes yeah. and you know, forget like building them back up uh, sort of ideology that totally clashed with what Trump said he wanted to do. So mm -hmm. I, I think that's, you know, I, I continue to think, and wouldn't it be great if at town hall events like the one CNN just had, he was pressed on his actual record from a Republican standpoint, from a conservative yes. standpoint, you said you want to do X, Y, and Z, but your administration did A, B, and C, or and you put in key figures. And, and you know, what, what about, you're saying the Twitter files, but it was your own agencies doing these things, but 100%. you're not gonna get that very vital criticism substantially, you're not going to get it from the mainstream media, with rare exceptions. That's right. Nobody is advocating on behalf of the actual Trump voters, who I think in large part have been misled and at very least um, disappointed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. More rising right after this.